Hey there everyone, this is Coder Jeet, your best friend in programming and today I am going to pick up another electron topic. It is context isolation in electron. And context isolation is something that you need to know about, especially if you're programming right now when security is one of the most important factors or one of the most important things that you will need to make sure that your app has. And context isolation is the most important security based feature in Electron that helps you overcome its biggest weakness. So let's find out what is context isolation and how you can program it correctly. The first thing we need to understand is why is context isolation important? Well, it's important because you need to create apps that are secure. Your app should not be exploitable and bad actors should not be able to use the weaknesses in your app to hurt your customers. And context isolation helps you do that because it's very likely that your app is facing or open to the internet. You might be accessing some APIs from the internet or some data from the internet. And because Electron is based on a web browser, but it also has access to the system resources, if your app is not secure, it can be a way or a conduit for hackers to hack into the computer of your customers and that's a very bad thing. With context isolation turned on, your web content operates in a completely isolated environment from the rest of your app. It cannot access the Node.js APIs and the Node.js APIs cannot access the web contents. We'll learn about this a little bit later and it will be clearer, I promise you. But first, let's have a look at a graphic. Electron apps have two processes the main process and the render process. Now the topic that we're dealing with deals exclusively with the render process so we're gonna limit ourselves to it and it can be further divided into two areas. The web content or the view, it's the website that's displayed. This is the code that is loaded in the app's browser and the preload, this is the second area, which is the backend code. So it's the web content and the preload Web content is all the content that's loaded in the browser and preload runs before the web content and it can expose functions and data to the web content. So using the preload, web content can access the backend APIs, the node APIs. To access any of the system resources, you have to use the preload file. The web contents object has to go through the preload and the node.js APIs can only be exposed by preload. If context isolation is turned on, like over here, I've got a new window and I have set context isolation turned to true or set to true, then web content and preload cannot access each other's objects directly. Now by default, context isolation is set to true in Electron. So even if you omit this line, context isolation will still be true. If you want to set it to false, you have to do it explicitly. It's a bad thing. So Electron makes you do it explicitly. So you can have context isolation turn to false by setting this to false, but it's not recommended. And by default, it will be true. The web content or the websites that's displayed is isolated from the preload and the rest of the node application if context isolation is turned on. Effectively, they run in two different worlds web content in the main world as it's called and the preload and the rest of your app in the isolated world. I'm sure you've heard about this before, main world and isolated world and it's time to understand it a little better. So here are the two worlds of Electron, the main world and the isolated world. In the main world, there's only web content, the web page that's displayed on screen and which talks to the isolated world using preloads. And in the isolated world, you've got the preload file, which then talks to the rest of the app. You can have code that's running in the preload itself and running in the rest of the app, talking to the main process using inter-process communication. And when it needs to talk to the main world or the website, it uses something called a bridge. I'm going to show you that a little bit later too. When you code a website, the most important object that you have is the window object, which has access to the DOM and all the other APIs that are connected to the website. If context isolation is turned off, then the preload file can add APIs to the window object. Basically, both the preload and web content areas, they share the same window object and anything that the preload adds, maybe a function, maybe an object or class or anything, 
uh, that Preload wants to add to window, it's possible it can add APIs to window and these APIs can even access Node.js functions and be available to the UI. So if context isolation is off, all the Node.js APIs are available directly to the UI, the web content object. But if it's on, then the two window objects in the preload and the web content are separate. So preload does not have access directly to the window object in web content and web content does not have direct access to the window object in preload. Basically, to communicate, they have to go through something that's called a bridge and using a bridge, the preload will only expose the exact functions that it wants to expose to the UI and the UI will not be able to access the entire set of Node.js APIs. I'll show you how a bridge works. So here we are in a preload file. This is called login.preload and it might deal with a UI, something related to login. So what this preload file does is it has just one function called check login. And if you pass an email and password to the check login, what it's going to do is it's invoking a main process function to get some sort of data to verify something against the internet. So it could be making an HTTP call and you know that we can make HTTP calls only in the main process. So it's using invoke to do that. Now this function needs to be called from the UI when somebody clicks the submit button. If context isolation is turned on, what you need to do is this. First, you will need to import a context bridge. You will need to have a reference to the context bridge, which is a part of the Electron API. So you can just do const context bridge in curly brackets equals to require Electron, and this will make context bridge available to you. When context isolation is turned on, the only way to talk to the UI, the web content, is through a context bridge, and there is a special function to do that. It's called expose in main world. So using expose in main world, you can expose all kinds of objects to the main world. That can include any kind of uh, data type like a number, an array, even objects of classes, or you can you can expose functions too. So here I've got an I've got a object called index bridge which has all the functions that I will put in this preload file. Right now it only has check login. So I am exposing in the main world an object called bridge. And inside of that object, I am putting an index bridge right over here. So in the UI, I will only be able to access index bridge functions, which is check login. Let's see how it's accessed in the UI. So I've got another file over here called the login view. And in this file, now I have a bridge object, which is a part of window. In the preload file, I'm exposing bridge using the expose in main world function. If I change it to anything like API, then I would be getting the an API object so you can name it whatever you want. It will become a part of your view window object. You can even expose multiple objects. So if you got multiple functions or if you want to expose multiple objects, you can do that. Like you can have a bridge two and if you have a index bridge two over here, you can expose that too. Right now let's keep it empty. And this is now exposed as bridge two. So in the view you can get reference to it as bridge two and it will be available to your code. And this bridge has all the objects and the functions that you've sent. So you can call check login using bridge dot check login. For example, what I'm doing here is I'm assigning window dot bridge to a bridge object, which is declared right over here. And then you can call check login on it and it will go to preload and from preload, whatever you want to do, whether you want to execute some node APIs right inside this preload file, or if you need to access the main process using IPC renderer, you can do all of that. Without context isolation, you could do something like this. You can write code like window check login equals to check login. And inside of your view, you can access this directly like window dot check login. And this is risky because the UI has access to the Node.js APIs. With context isolation turned on, the UI has access only to the exact functions that you have shared with it. So a hacker cannot execute arbitrary code. Always have context isolation turned on in your professional node applications. If you want to ship it and you have many, many users who will use this app, make sure context isolation is turned on. Now, if you're making something for your internal use or your organization use where your customers are going to be trusted, when you're, where your users are going to be trusted and you're not using the internet much, 
then you can afford to turn it off to get a little bit of ease but I recommend you get into the habit of programming with context isolation turned on. I hope this video was helpful, you understand what context isolation is all about and you also understood the difference between contexts and worlds. Many people are confused about it, about the processes, the context and the world. I hope this video really really clarified everything. Give it a like if it did, give it a like if you understood context isolation and don't forget to subscribe. I will be making a lot of fresh content for you about programming concepts, about programming technologies and languages with a focus on real world code as written by a practicing programmer. This is Code Ajit, your best friend in programming, signing off.